The Bible reads here in verse number 21, Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people, and the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them. The neighbor and his friend shall perish. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, a people cometh from the north country, and a great nation shall be raised from the sides of the earth. They shall lay hold on bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roareth like the sea, and they ride upon horses set in array as men for war against thee, O daughter of Zion. And look, he's preaching against his own people, because this is what happened to the children of Israel. They started going down into these depths of, of wickedness, and you know, to the point to where God was even saying, you know what? You're not even as bad as, as Sodom was. Or, I mean, you're, you're worse than Sodom was. Oh, they had gone way off the deep end, and you know what he decided to do? He decided to bring judgment and punishment. Look, people need to be aware that this, this is the outcome. God's not going to let you. God's not mocked. God's not just going to let you get away with it. God's not going to let this world just get away with all the wickedness and perversion and filth and sin. That's why, you know, part of our job is to try to stay that off. Amen. Try to wake people up. Hey, look, this is what's going to happen. Amen. You want to be so friendly and so loving, you're more loving than God. Yeah. Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Look, we need to be warned. People need to be warned. Yeah. Verse 24, we have heard the fame thereof. Our hands wax feeble. Anguish has taken hold of us, and pain is of a woman in travail. Go not forth into the field, nor walk by the way, for the sword of the enemy and fear is on every side. O daughter of my people, gird thee with sackcloth, and wallow thyself in ashes. Make thee mourning as for an only son, most bitter lamentation, for the spoiler shall suddenly come upon us. I have set thee for a tower and a fortress among my people, that thou mayest know and try their way. They are all grievous revolters, walking with slanders. They are brass and iron, they are all corruptors. I think you guys have... have Notice that a little bit recently too, right? Yep. The grievous revolters walking with slanders. Yep. You get a first-hand taste of how the media works. Yep. You get a first-hand taste of how the sodomites work. Right. It's all full, full of slander yep. and lies. Yep. You know, that's why I, I don't watch the tell lie vision, yep. even for the news, because I know it's all just fake. Yep. Yep. That's right. They have their own agenda. They're not going to actually publish the truth. Especially not when there's perverts involved. They like pushing that agenda. All the more reason, folks, I'll reiterate this, why it's important to listen to your pastor. When he's saying don't engage them out there, we don't need to give them any. Look, they're already doing everything they can to slander and, and, and misrepresent and make you all out to be really bad people. Don't give them any justification with their, for their lies by engaging in a physical battle. Right. It's not the time for that, and it's not the place. It's not our fight. It's not our fight. They're going to walk with slanders. Verse 29, the bellows are burned, the lead is consumed of the fire, the founder melteth in vain, for the wicked are not plucked away. This is talking about a founder, someone who's, who's making metal, right, and purifying it, and he's saying he's melting that metal in vain. Because the wicked are not plucked away, meaning that that dross and, that, and the, the, the impurities are just, they're not coming out. And he's saying it's just in vain because they're not, he's not removing the impurities. And then he likens this, verse 30, reprobate silver shall men call them because the Lord hath rejected them. See, we read earlier how they were rejecting the Lord. They didn't want to follow his ways. They didn't want to have anything to do with them. And then how does the chapter end? Well, God's calling them reprobate. Because he's rejected them. He said, oh, you want to reject me? You want to reject my ways? After I've held out my hand, after I've, I've preached, I've sent people to warn you, I've told you the right ways, I've instructed you, and you would not, you refused. Just like Proverbs 1 says, you know what? You know what? Now when your fear comes, I'm going to mock. I'm going to laugh at your calamity. 